Welcome to lesson 12 where I want to go into the details about candles. The basic parts of the candles are the body and the wick. This is the body right here and this is the wick and the bottom wick. Some people also call it a tail which makes no sense to me. Just keep with the theme here. A candle represents a period of time which we'll call time frames. So if one of these candles represented a daily candle, it would show you where price has moved from the opening second of the day to the closing second of the day. If we were to represent an hourly candle, it would be from the first second of the trading hour to the last second of the trading hour. Reading candles is fairly simple. The very top of the wick is the highest price the candle reached within that time period the candle represents highest price the top of this green candle body right here shows where the price close in the time period the candle represents the bottom of the body of the green candle right here shows where the price opened at the beginning of the time period the candle represents bottom of the bottom wick shows the lowest price moved within the within the time period the candle represents. The red candle, everything is essentially the same except the top of the body is the open price and the bottom of the body is the closed price. That is why it's red, because the closing price is below the opening price. So on the green candle, the price opened lower and buyers came in and pushed the price up on the red candle, the price opened higher and closed lower because the sellers came in and pushed the price down. We talked about these a little bit before. The green candle closing with a, with a body in the 38.2% or 30% of the candle is bullish. The body closing red in the bottom portion is bearish. This is an example of something you can find your own numbers for and testing however you want to define such candles, a pin bar candle. The engulfing candle dwarfs the candle before signaling, a, before signaling a change in buying or selling pressure. So this is a bullish engulfing, this is a bearish engulfing. Inside bar candles show consolidation and a potential breakout. The higher probability is breaking out in line with the previous trend. So for instance, if price was trending up, if it was bullish, and you get an inside bar, it's likely to go up again. Or if this or if price was coming down and you have an inside bar, it's likely to come back down again. And this is consolidation. Price is consolidating in an inside bar. Candles that have small wicks on both sides and not much of a body aren't signaling much of a direction. This can be interpreted as indecision in the market. Conversely, a long candle wick or wick shows a lot of pressure one way or the other. Hammer candle signals reversal at the bottom of a downtrend. You can see the price comes down and buying, pr and buying pressure comes in. Price has moved down and buying pressure has moved in. Shooting star signals the end of a bullish trend. You can see the price goes up and then push down showing selling pressure coming in. So price has moved up and then come down and left a wick after the close. And then you can expect price to come down. Once again, none of these are exact. You just have to find the patterns that consistently work enough that you can be profitable according to your risk reward ratio. The evening star signals a bearish reversal and the morning star signals a bullish reversal. Tweezer tops and bottoms also signal a reversal, much like the hammer. Trailing off candles, losing buying or selling pressure so the reversal can come in.
So you can see buying pressure is very high, it's trailing off, and then slams down. Selling pressure is high, trails off, slam price slams up. Three soldiers can signal a reversal from a downtrend to an uptrend. Often you'll see three really big green candles signaling a reversal to an upward trend. The market isn't going to do exactly what you think it is. No method will make you the perfect trader. The market is too chaotic, manipulated, whatever you want to call it. It's about having an edge and winning over time with probabilities. I picked a random piece of a chart we'll look at and analyze the candles. Alright, so you can see this is a bearish candle, the 38.2. You can see a bullish candle here. And you can see so you can see that this is a bearish 38.2 and you can see price moved lower. And then you can see the reversal here with the 38.2 bullish and price you can see moves up. You can see indecision here, doji indecision. Here's another bullish 38.2 and you can see price reacts to the upside to it. And once again this is just a random piece of chart that I chose. Here's a hammer candle that's bullish and you can see price really rea reacts to that but you also have one here that's bearish and here's a bullish one. So it's not an exact science. And you can see more in here like this is complete indecision then price moves to the upside. And that's why you're just searching for probabilities. Like if 60% of the time price moves up after this candle, then with a two to one risk reward ratio, then you can be profitable. And that's why You'll never hear a trader that is serious and actually trying to help you say that trading is a get-rich-quick scheme. Trading is a get-rich-slow scheme. Get-rich-slow scheme. When trading, you're going to create or use a strategy that will combine a variety of confirmations that will need to be checked off in order for the trade to be viable for you to keep your edge. Candlesticks will be one of the things you can look at to interpret the market. They are very useful to figure out, figure out entries and stop losses. You always want to align with the trend on a higher time frame. When I'm on the 15 minute, I'm checking the 4 hour. If I'm on the hourly, I'm checking the daily. If I'm able to align candles and trend on the 15 minute and 4 hour, that's a strong case. If I add in buying and sell zones and support and resistance, I have an even stronger case. Trading is about stacking evidence in your favor. Let's use this 38.2 candle to figure out our entry. Right here. Let's say we enter at the 50% mark of the body and our stop loss is at the bottom of the wick. So 50% of the body. And our stop loss is the bottom of the wick. We can also see there's buying pressure here beyond just the wick itself because of the equal lows. Our take profit is a previous point of resistance identified from earlier in the market. Here's our take profit. And then, boom, we hit a 3 to 1. We, risk, we risked 1% of our account and made 3%. Side note, I would typically put my stop loss further down because this is a great place for institutions to knock out, liquid, knock out liquidity. 
See how these are equal lows? I try to identify areas all the other retail traders are pulling liquidity and not be taken out with them. This is by no means every candle pattern or candlestick you can learn. It is the most popular ones and, and ones you will use on the strategies I share. Let's put some of these things together. This is an untested strategy. I just want you to want to throw you some of the things we've learned so far. So first in this plan we're going to start with a signal. This is what's going to tell us which charts to dive into. We see the 5MA cross above the 13 and the 13 cross above the 62. Cool, we're looking for a buy. Second, we go to the chart and we find a break of structure. The example on the left is a buy and the one on the right is a sell. We can see market was trending up and then break of structure because it breaks this higher low. trend is broken it's a break of structure because and it breaks the trend line third we check the we check the trend to align with a downtrend for a sell and an uptrend for a buy on the next slide we have a confusing example which is exactly what I want the one hour looks like it was in an uptrend and now it's ranging the one hour looks like it was in an uptrend and now it's range ranging. The four hour looks like an uptrend that might reverse soon. The 24 hour is 0.1%, 0.1% green. So we're going to say that we're supported by trend for a buy. Four, identify an engulfing candle. So here we have a bullish engulfing. So you can see this green candle completely engulfs the red candle, previous red candle. Here you can see we have a bearish engulfing because the red candle completely engulfs the previous green. Bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing. Five, match up the 71 or 786 fib for an entry. We go down to the five minute and we find a bullish engulfing candle that lines up with our 71 fib. We have a potential sell here. Match buy zones for buy and sell zones for sell. 6. Align with buy zones and sell zones. On the 15 minute, we're entering in a buy zone and we're exiting at the sell zone in the 5 minute. 7. Find equal lows, imbalance, and sell and buy zones to confirm exit and entry. Well, look at that. We won one of our trades from one of these videos. Okay, so I have all my charts up here and I'm looking for the 5MA to cross above or below the 13MA and the 13MA to cross above or below the 62MA. So here I have the 13 has crossed the 62 and I have the 5 has crossed the 13. So I'm going to look for a buy on GBPUSD. Find a break of structure. I'm on the what, 15 minute? Right. Yeah, 15 minute. Find a break of structure. Okay, so I have a downtrend.
and I have a break of structure. Number three, align with trend and time frame. So you can see this again. Identify an engulfing candle. There's one right there. That's our best one. Engulfing candle. Align with trend. Break of structure. Align with trend. 15 minute. So I'm going to look at the four hour. So I'm looking for an uptrend. Which is what I see. So we have an uptrend here. We have an uptrend. Uptrend. Higher highs, higher highs, higher lows. Go back to the 15 minute. And if at one of these points I don't find what it is that I am looking for, then you need to be very objective. Just go back. Okay, so let's say it was in a downtrend. I go back. I look for a different trade. Maybe I set an alarm for something I'm hoping to see in the future and I come back. There's plenty of charts out there. Be picky. And the more evidence that you stack in your favor, the higher chance, the higher the probability of you winning is. The higher the probability of you winning is. Identify an engulfing candle. Very much have one there. There's one there. And this looks like a buy zone. We have an engulfing candle here. Bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing. And if we move up a time frame, oh, even that doesn't give us a bullish engulfing. Okay. Match the engulfed candle to the 61771 or 78. And we have a good entry right here. Long position. That is between the seven one seven eight six fib retracement. We of course have a buy zone and a sell zone here, and we have a buy and a buy zone, and we can go for a sell and a sell zone. On this trade, I would wait to see what price does at this level to see if it starts to break down and then see if it finds support here or here and then I would probably make a market buy order and number seven find equal lows and balance and sell or buy zones for target so you can see we have an equal low here which often there's liquidity hunting or essentially there's just a lot of liquidity liquidity there no matter what this is where people are going to set their stop losses because they think it's a double bottom equal lows so they think price will find support right here so I like to go below it you can even go under this weak low maybe even do a trend line the further down you go, the safer it is. So the smaller your stop loss, the higher risk it is. Let's go for a two to one. Imbalance. Imbalance is where price has not crossed 
so there would be imbalance here. You have equal highs up here. As I said before, it's just higher risk. So you're going to lose more of these trades, but the ones that you win, you're going to win more. Really, what I would be hoping for is for price to come down and respect this as the new support. So this was resistance, price comes down and respects the new support. If it doesn't, it'll break through. So I would wait for price to come back down here and respect these candles, respect the new potential support, and then make a market order buy. And we'll go ahead and just enter this because we'll probably come back and see it later. Let's see. Okay, we're going to make our order. What are we on? 2P USD. We're going to risk 1%. We're going to make a pending order. Entry price, profit, stop, make sure you calculate, and we're doing a buy limit. There we go. Once again, I would not make this, I would not set this buy. I would wait. You can set a notification. I would set it above where I want to enter, add alert, and then you'd have to select, select create. And we're trading on the 15 minute. And that's pretty much it. That's it for this video. I want to mention a struggle for mine of I want to mention a struggle of mine recently. I don't hear these so-called gurus talk about their own struggles. So I'm testing a strategy and I'm up 18% on my portfolio in three weeks. My goal was 5% a week, so I'm shattering it. Feeling good. Fourth week, I lose 10 trades in a row. 10. I'm down 9.5% for the week. So overall, I'm still up. I'm wondering if I'm wasting my time, if this strategy is even worth refining. So I take a day off and come back. My mental just isn't there. I work out as hard as I can, trying to just drive the negativity out of me. I go to bed early to wake up at 5 a.m. to hit it hard the next day. My son, almost four, is in my bed at 1 a.m. crying that he wants a flashlight. And him and my wife are arguing about it. I get in a fight with my wife because I handle those things differently. She says, go to sleep to me and takes my screaming son out in the hall. Wakes up our almost two-year-old who is now screaming his head off. So I get up, get both boys squared away, and go back to bed. I think I got up at 6 a.m. and had to literally jump out of bed and turn off my brain because it probably wasn't going to help to think. I try to calm myself down as I have a severely critical mind shut up the negativity of being critical of myself, trading, my wife, my kids, and I end up making two trades that morning that make it all back. I am struggling. You are going to struggle. What makes you different from 97% that try this? Don't tell me. Show me. Get up. Do the work. Work on yourself. Take accountability. Love yourself. Find your why and hold desperately onto it sometimes. Hopefully you got value out of this video and stay symbiotic. Hit that like button, hit that share button, 
hit that subscribe button, and hopefully this was valuable to you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.